Welcome back to Power and Politics. Well, the holiday season is upon us. That means many Canadians are making good use of their credit cards. Or maybe not so good use. How much are those cards, though, actually costing consumers and actually costing the merchants? Today, Canada's Competition Bureau filed an application demanding an end to what they call restrictive and anti-competitive rules that Visa and MasterCard, the two giants, impose on merchants who accept their credit cards. So what exactly are they taking issue with and how is this affecting Canadian consumers? Let me show you the hot sheet on the Bureau's complaints. The Competition Bureau says the no surcharge rule between Visa and MasterCard eliminates competition. That rule bans merchants from encouraging customers to use lower cost forms of payment like debit and cash, which in turn encourages businesses to bury surcharges in all their products. Credit companies also require merchants to accept all credit cards offered by the company, even cards that charge higher fees like those premium cards. And Canadian merchants end up paying an estimated $5 billion, you got that right, $5 billion a year in hidden credit card fees. So should the government force credit card companies to make their hidden fees public so consumers can make a more educated choice on how they pay? Joining me now are the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Finance, Ted Menzies, the Liberal Consumer Affairs critic, Dan McTague, and the NDP Consumer Protection critic, Glenn Tebow. Gentlemen. I can't say how good it is to see all of you here, and we hope to see you here tomorrow because the House, we hope, will not rise. All we're, right. we're supposed to say it's wonderful to see yeah, you yeah, too. It's wonderful. Okay, uh, sorry we weren't right on top of that one. It's the holiday season. We can fake how much we all want to be here right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Uh, obviously, this is a big issue. Uh, Glenn Tebow, let me start with you. Uh, the NDP has been uh, made, a, made a big issue about the credit card issue uh, in the House, so let me start with you. Uh, do you support what's going on? The Competition Bureau is saying that Visa and MasterCard are imposing anti-competitive rules on merchants. What should be done here? Um, we're, we're in favor of what the Competition Bureau is saying, and we've been saying this all along. We've been asking questions in the House. Uh, just today, Jack uh, Layton, my leader, come out and, and ask the government again. And what we would like to see is the government bring forward more than the voluntary code of conduct. With today's decision with the Competition Bureau, it's showing that the voluntary code doesn't have the teeth necessary to protect small businesses, and ultimately, at the end of that, it's consumers, because we will all end up paying more if we allow ca uh, credit card companies to continue to gouge away. All right, uh, let me bring it down, McTague, because you've also been talking about this. A lot of these questions are about the hidden fees, and we all have credit cards, and we all have debit cards, and, but there are different fee structures. And, and part of what the Competition Bureau talked about today are these hidden fees. Give right. me your understanding of that and what you think should happen there. Well, there's a number of fees, and they can change without the consent of the merchant. This, after all, was the, uh, the decision that was made under the Voluntary Code. I quite agree with uh, what Glenn has said. The Voluntary Code appears now as a result of the decision by the Competition Bureau to refer, refer this matter to the Tribunal to be dead on arrival. Uh, there are some aspects of the Voluntary Code which we had hoped uh, would, have been, uh, would have been implemented, uh, which would have been respected by issuers of credit cards, which have been uh, certainly considered by the visas and the MasterCards, who have about 90% of, uh, of all of the transactions in this country. But clearly, the decision today by the Competition Tribunal suggests, uh, by the Bureau, mm -hmm. suggests that there is something more than wrong. It's hidden, it's sneaky, and there's no chance for merchants really to have any uh, type of recourse, which was promised to them, uh, to refuse a card or to add supplementary surcharges if they needed to to compensate for these increases. Most importantly though, one of the greatest violations that occurred, and they said it was just a glitch, was CIBC Visa being allowed to come out with a credit debit card at the same time, the so-called co-badging. Merchants were, were not even told about it, but were told you have to respect this as a condition for respecting all of our debit cards, all of our credit cards. That leaves merchants in a very vulnerable position in which they have two choices go out of business or increase costs for consumers. So, right, so bad for pass. consumers, bad for uh, business. So you, you listen to this, Ted Menzies, and you, and you heard about the Competition Bureau. What's the response? Uh, there has been this voluntary um, regulation. Well, in fact, there still is. Right. So is that enough? That, that is why the Competition Bureau has the, the, uh, has the authority to act the way that it did today. Uh, I'm, not uh, I'm not going to comment on where the tribunal will go. But if we didn't have a voluntary code of conduct that does exactly what, what Dan and Glenn were, were complaining about, that's why we put this in place. The merchants now, because of the voluntary code of conduct, have the right to refuse to use one brand name 
if they, uh, if they choose not to use either a debit or a credit. They didn't have that before through the voluntary code. We've offered that to them. We worked with the Consumers Association. We worked with merchants. We worked with consumers. And we worked with the Competition Bureau to make sure that they were comfortable with what but, we were going ahead with. But, but the most important thing is the minister has been on the record and said we're going to do this on a voluntary basis. If Visa, MasterCard, everyone else does not comply, then he will make it involuntary. Well, there's we, where there's yeah. therein lies uh, where the future of this will go. We offered them, all the participants, the opportunity to participate participate on okay. a fair Respect basis. Well. But just let me jump in if with they that don't, piece. It the will be the mandatory. competition bureau was investigating Visa and Mastercard before the voluntary code was implemented because they saw the practices that were happening. They heard from the CFIB. They heard from the Retail Council of Canada. These small businesses were complaining that they were being gouged. Well, There's more and more businesses that have been saying, we want people to use debit, not credit, because the costs are, are, are insurmountable for many of the small the, businesses. And debit, Senate, debit's a flat fee of a 12 cent per purchase regardless interact. of the price. Interact. So interact, yeah, interact. interact. What's, what's and important then the credit to know, cards are percentages 1.5 to 3 percent depending. It, What's interesting, though, right. was the, the, the co-badging issue, which broke the, the spirit and, right. and the law in view of the voluntary code, means literally that uh, those numbers will change. Do, they don't longer use Interact. They use their own networks. Right. As a result of using their own network, they're not giving merchant the right to, in fact, make those decisions to choose or not to choose. The fact is that the voluntary code is finished. As of today, it is clear that the government has to now move to a position of at least suspending any future increases right now on interchange fees and to ensure that there are no new cards introduced until the tribunal you, makes that decision. Is, and do you buy that, Ted Menzies? The minister has been very clear. Okay, if, so if, these, if all of the parties don't act in good faith, represent... But, but yesterday of, the minister was praising consumers. this. Today it's, it's condemned. It, it yeah. is working because we it's now have working. an opportunity <laughs> for, for the tribunal to look seriously at it and find out if, if your claims are accurate. Ted, uh, we listen to, we listen yeah. to, but while we to continue the consumer the associations as well no, they're as walking away in the droves. merchant associations. Yeah. But while we continue yeah. to, to talk and talk and talk, consumers and small businesses are having to pay. Yeah, right? the, 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 the interchange fees yeah. continue to rise. And, and you know what? We're in an economic downturn. We hear it from them yeah. all the time. We actually need to start protecting consumers and protecting small businesses because they drive our economy. And so a host of new fees so have been introduced. So should the government come down and say, forget just the voluntary things in place, but should the government come down and regulate, put a regulation that all these hidden fees are exposed for the merchant, but also for the consumer, so there's a real choice in the market. Everything comes up. You can choose to pay with your debit, your credit card. All these hidden fees have to be up front so everybody's aware of it. That's part of the, of the voluntary code of conduct, is to, if, is to show those to the consumer. Canadians love their points, uh, and so they've, they've voted with their cards. They don't accept the. They're still a low but cost are, card. Are they, they're but still are a low they cost voting, card. But do they available have all the information when they vote? That this is what's part of the code is the information too, provided to them. We put in place the fact uh, a, a piece of information that has to be put in every bill that tells you if not you particularly the, the consumer, side, consumer we get the yeah, consumer yeah. side accept the concern we have here is know the, the facts the cost to you. This is restraint if trade. you don't. Pay it is well, what about all the merchant and we the have merchant side? We the have merchant merchant the merchants are seeing in this country. We now have basically lawlessness as it relates to credit card companies being able to take advantage of merchants, and they are not in a position to do anything other than to volunteer their own money to allow those visas and those Mastercards to decide where the money is to be spent on consumers or whoever. It's short-term gain for consumers. It's obviously long-term benefits. Okay, so what, for only you, so what do you want the government to do? I think for right now, as, as it relates to, we need to do some of the Canadian payment system and those who sit on it. The composition of the of the task force force is really heavily, uh, you know, replete with financial observers. There's no formal or significant number of merchants sitting on that task force. It's about to make some serious recommendations. Number two, the Section 10 of the Voluntary Code was yeah. in fact violated with the co-badging that I raised earlier. That's quite different from what the Bureau has mentioned today. Uh, with what the Bureau has given today, it's clear that the Voluntary Code does not work. It does not work in the consumer's interest, ultimately. It does not work in the merchant's interest. The government should volunteer right now to say no future fees, no increases in the interchange, because it's not just the interchange mm -hmm. rate we're talking about. There's a number of other hidden fees that go along with these new cards. Right. Until the Tribunal has made its decision, the government should be making a declaration right now through Mr. Menzies or the minister that it did not work and therefore they have to make adjustments accordingly. Do you, do you, do you agree with that by the way? 
Yes, and we need to do a little more, but when you're even looking at the voluntary code, Visa, to its credit, has posted its interchange rates on the website. MasterCard, MasterCard has not. Yeah. So w the voluntary code's not even working in the sense of having the two, <laughs> two major players bring forward... And they dominate, what, 90%? 90% of the market. Yeah. So you know what? It's earlier. time to look at what other countries have done. Australia, New Zealand, the continent of Europe. You know what? The, we can bring forward things and, and interchange fees once this tribunal follows through with it, mm -hmm. to actually start protecting businesses and, and we're protecting consumers. And we're going to lose Interact. If we lose Interact, we're we done. lose probably we're the done. best system we have in the world. It's the envy of the world. If we lose Interact by, by allowing credit card companies to co-badge, to proceed under the voluntary rules, to create their own monstrosities, hit merchants with whatever fee, they say between 1.5 and 3 yeah. right. 1.5 and 3%, get Ted, Menzi, they can be 10% I mean, without that Interact. That could be one of the costs of this, which is the Interact, which is important because people do use their debit cards through that. Interact is a very important part of our debit and credit system in this country. Uh, consumers use it. It's been very effective. It, it has back? been the envy of Visa and MasterCard. Is it and that's why the minister acted. That's why the minister acted and acted early on because of, of the threat of Visa and MasterCard taking over this very effective, not-for-profit system. Yep. That, that, this is being flooded. That's for the tribunal to decide. No, but it should the be minister, for your government to decide. The minister We've will, will take it's the most direction from period. that. This so, is the so, time so, when business is not want, so, so you've the heard the that, that So, you so you're hearing the complaints, Talk Mr. Menzies. Head, will, will the government do anything before the tribunal? Any changes at all before the tribunal uh, gives the a minister decision? The minister's pretty clear. He's, he has left the door open. If, if he feels it's not working, then he will make it. So what do we have to see so to make sure to know that it's not working? We've had the competition bureau say there's there's anti-competition practices in place. We have uh, small businesses complaining through RCC and the CFIB. Right. We have consumers coming forward. It's time for this government to act so small businesses the can actually season. start. It's the Christmas season, but it's also open season on merchants. The government has to act. It should act today to ensure that there are no new rates increases. There are no new cards. The voluntary code allows them to make money right. at will. I got to leave it there. You said the door is open. Will we see any action in the next couple of months or even in the next couple of weeks? I'm not the minister. He'll make the final decision. I'll be glad to do but it. But his him. decision yeah. will be based on protecting both the merchants and consumers. All right, Ted Menzies, Dan McTagg, and uh, Glenn Tebow, guys. Uh, good to see you. Thank Thanks, you. I'm glad you're here for another day. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but if, I, if we don't see you, have a good holiday. Somehow I don't Thanks. believe that. Yeah. <laughs> it might be too Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. I, 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 I always everyone. am happy to see have you. Have a Merry Thanks, Christmas. Guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. Okay, stay with us. A tax package of nearly $860 billion passes in the U.S. Senate. So why is President Obama trying to strengthen ties with business as we speak? PNP goes stateside. But first, let's get our political watchdogs. They're barking over a possible spring election. And Nichols will bring us the latest on that. So lots to come. Stay with Power and Politics.